All right, guys, welcome back. It's been a little bit of time. I've been a little busy just clearing and working on the fence for the goats, but grapevine, I'll show you the grapevine here. It's getting a little out of control. Uh, last year was this little tiny vine, and I had this little uh, tomato trellis. But now it's just, it's getting everywhere. It's pulling this thing down continuously. And uh, I do have a Japanese beetle problem. I start eating the leaves, fortunately. You can see all the freaking holes on the leaves. All the pipes. So, yes, I'm with some Japanese beetle traps today. We'll put them out. Today we're going to build a grapevine arbor. I keep wanting to say trellis for some reason, but arbor. What we're going to do is, I got another one started right there, another grapevine. Let's see if we can see it. It's a different kind, it has a lot bigger leaves. Dang, they're starting to munch on it too. It's getting, but uh, there it is. So we're going to come over a bit further. I'm going to put a 4x4, four four. I'm about 5, 10 foot away from it. And we're going to do the same thing over here. We're going to come over here. Maybe that bar. Maybe where I got my bar. Sorry about the crazy camera angles, but we got the bar right here. And that's another, you know, 5, 10 foot from that vine. All the way out to there is probably... Mm, good 30, 35 foot maybe. So that'd be a good long run. Because this one's... We'll probably have to trim this one back. It's just... It's everywhere. So we'll grow it up and we'll let one grow towards us and one grow that way. And the same thing with that one, whenever it sprouts up. I planted it this year. I've had two in that spot. It's the second one and it actually is doing all right. The other one didn't make it. Uh, it's Concord. Don't know what this one is. This one already started getting grapes, but I've been trimming them off. Wait, hold on, let me get that. Cause I don't want them to, I want it to put the energy into the vine itself. So, the only thing you need right now would be a pretty simple project. Unfortunately, it hasn't rained in a while, so this ground is a rock. So, the tools you want is, this is called a digging bar. You don't want to use it for prying or nothing. This end you can actually, when you got it down in the ground pretty good, you can hit it with a hammer. Or, it's mainly used to pack the dirt. And supposedly... You can dig a hole with it. You use this end, chop the ground, and then this end supposedly you, let's see if I can get it, you pull the dirt out of the hole with. But I just use a post hole digger. And you want to get a pair of post hole diggers that are kind of scissored like this because you don't have to move the handle as much so you can dig a deeper hole. The other ones, don't have the scissors, the, hole, the handles open really far apart. So to dig a deeper hole, you have to dig a way bigger hole. So, and these cobalt ones, they're kind of rattling and janky sounding, but I've dug hundreds of holes with them, hundreds of hundreds of post holes, and they've held up. And I leave them outside and I'm not very good on them. So do recommend them. So I'm going on back here. Oh yeah, I got my four by fours. Four bags of red bag concrete, which dries in like, I don't know, it's like 30, 40 minutes. Uh, and then I got some high strength, or not high strength, high tensile nine gauge or eight gauge wire for like chain link fence or bar, uh, electric wire. I'm gonna use that. Got four eyelets and two turnbuckles. So we'll run our wire, kind as tight as we can pull it by hand and then we can tighten it down with the turnbuckle. So let's get the hole dug. We're gonna come off the bank. I don't know. Somewhere over here, a little bit away from that hole. And then after uh later on down the road we'll probably build a little raised bed and fill the whole trough with uh mulch. So you don't have to try to weed eat around underneath and stuff like that. As you can see, this thing works pretty decent. It just is uh, kind of like an ax for dirt. You just kind of... Just kind of jamming on down in there. All right, let's take 
a tiny break because it's like five in the morning. There's a little goaty goats hanging out. We got all of our new little chickens. I wonder where Cogburn's going. It's kind of dangerous to go out in the middle of the field because there's a uh, hawks. Yeah, the roosters are starting to get their crows. Yeah. The water bar is working out pretty good. That metal feeder, they don't like it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Call him Stripes. We're about to sell some of the roosters off because we got a lot of roosters. Not many hens. Probably got about half roosters. <laughs> Let's go check the goats. <laughs> <laughs> He's way up over there. Been clearing the pond area. We got to get the dirt from the pond area, put there and in there. We'll get this area. Seem to get a wood fence all the way around this area for the garden. A little fence around there for the waste reading area. Here's a the little goaty guys. So they've been bringing them sweet feed every couple of days. So trying to get them used to me. She keeps getting back in there. <laughs> you keep getting back in there, don't you? What are you doing, guys? You doing, Blue? She's being the mean one. Yeah. Are you being the mean one? Blue. Look at you, little mocha. Little mochi mochi. They're still pretty, uh, uh, what do you call it? Standoffishy, I guess. You can get kind of close, but then they'll jump. This one's a little sweet looking one. I don't know why you guys are afraid. But yeah, the, the area we were clearing before, they cleared it. Pretty much cleared it all out. I've just been hauling the stuff and throwing it in a pile. So. For the project, we're going to build a goat house and a playground. I had to put these chains on this thing to keep it from falling over. The vine just keeps pulling the whole thing over. All right, I probably don't need to teach you how to dig a hole, so everybody does it a different way. I'm gonna dig the holes. I'll dig the holes, then we'll get the four by fours over. We'll put them in. Hair's all crazy. And then uh, the red bag, you just put your four by four in, you just dump the concrete around it. We'll get the hose and just trickle some water over it. And then I'll go take a break for a while, come back, and we'll stretch our cables. So, when I come back, we'll have the holes dug, hopefully. I do believe that is deep enough. Yeah, we're about three foot. That's pretty deep for the post. I'll show you. It actually, if you can, well, it's hard to tell, but about two foot down, it started to wetten up a little bit. So that's good. Got a little bit of moist dirt. Maybe we got clay here. Let's grab the post. There we go. Sometimes you can just use it. You can tap the bottom, tamp the bottom with it, and your post will stand by itself pretty straight. Self-leveling. I was gonna buy that little thing, it clips on the post, has a level on both sides, then I forgot. So I'm gonna grab a bag of ready mix. What I'll do is, I'll just cut the ready mix and I'll slowly pour it in a hole around it. And it's, when I slowly pour it, it'll just tighten around the post and I'll get the hose and just kind of wet it a little bit and that'll be it. See, I bought four bags of ready mix. I don't think I need that much, but I can use it. I can put it around my drain area over there. The pipe goes under the road, keep it from the road, and I just pour it down in there. Yeah, it's probably not good to breathe the dust, but I'm a welder, so I breathe worse, I imagine. This is a 50 pound. That looks like I might take 
I'm only gonna put two in there. If it, two don't fill it, I'm not. That's a hundred pounds of concrete on it. So. You know what? I might get the hose now and add a little water in between. I right, we'll just get it on a little bit of a shower here. And that's what this stuff's made for. It's made to be able to work its way down through there. This stuff will set up pretty quick. So I only need about a quarter of another bag or half or so. And you don't have to use this red bag. It's a, I think it's a dollar more, but it really cuts down on the uh, time. It's hard to beat some ready mix concrete. It also pulled the moisture out of the ground too to help set it up. All right, I got my post. Now directly, it's gonna go straight down over there, put another post. Let me move all the crap down there. I'll get set up, we'll put the post in, and I'll bring you back when we get ready to string the cable. All right guys, we got both posts in. They gotta dry though, but we got both. <clears throat> Here's our one, there's our other way down there. We'll go take a break in the house in the AC for a little bit. I'll get my bucket and tools out that I don't need now. The only thing we should need is probably uh, a pair of pliers and a wire cutter. The eyelet, you can kind of tap them in the post and turn and screw it in. Or you pre-drill it. All right, guys, it's been a little bit. I'm just going to need a few things for the next step. A uh, decent pair of cutters, depending on the gauge of wire you run. I'm running, like I said... Let's see, what does it say? It's got a tag on here. It says, it's a 170 foot roll, nine gauge tension wire. Then I got some uh, violets. That should be plenty stout, I imagine. And turnbuckles. Now this end, I'm gonna run the wire through. And then this end with a hook, I can hook it onto the latch. I might for ease, I might grab my drill so I can pre-drill this a tiny hole and get these started. Because normally you can put them there, hit them with a hammer, push and turn, but I have a drill and make it easier. Let me go grab that. Well, it's not a drill, it's an impact driver, but I have impact driver bits. <clears throat> just want to find one that's not super big where it won't take. <clears throat> Dang, okay. These things are super handy and they're pretty decently priced nowadays. There we go. The only bad thing about the impact driver bits, that there ain't a whole lot of them. But I don't need much. All right. All right, so I'll probably come down around here somewhere. Let's see. Right, that thing. Freaking laser. I wonder if I can use this part. Ah, there we go. And let's see, how do we want it? Yeah, because it'll turn back. Alright, I'll probably do that. That's how that's going to go. And we'll end up hooking our, I don't know if you can see it, we'll end up hooking our wire to this, run it on to the other one, hook the wire into there, and then we can just tighten this on down, whichever way. And it'll pull the wire and we'll tighten it up. Post seems fairly stout. Then our second one, our second line, we'll get a better idea how we want it when we uh, get the top one on. So let me get the other one put in, and we'll come over here and mess with the cable. I got my loop in. This is on here. I don't know if this is enough. This stuff is pretty stout. So let's get the wrench. I'll see if I can turn it. I'd like for it to... Yeah, that's what I'm afraid of. I think I'm gonna run out of... Dang it. I'm gonna run out of room. 
I mean, it's not, I'm not sure how tight I need to be. You can see, if you can see down the wire, there's a few wrinkles. Nah, it's got some sag to it. I don't really like that. So let me... I'm, I'm alright with this wrap here. I'm probably going to wrap something around that sharp. That'd be uh, some tape or something. I'll probably go down the other end and see if I can do something with that. I was able to cut, I was able to cut that loop part off. Grab it with the pliers, bend it, and pull it down through there. Pull it. Got it fairly sh straight. Fairly taut. Now we can just take and turn this thing. Tighten it down and hopefully <clears throat> that'll do it. Now it's going to have some flex in the post. <coughs> hey. You know, a little... Uh, pretty stout wire so I guess I could have sprayed a little WD-40 on this thing it's like one doesn't really want to turn I'm just going all the way with it I think this is what I'm gonna do All right, that seems pretty tight. It's gonna bow a little bit, it's gonna pull down when the grapes get in there. Down the road, we may add probably another post in the center. All right, that looks pretty decent. We got that in, I'm gonna run down there. I'm gonna put the other one in, we'll do the same thing, and we'll see if we can get the grapevine on there, which I'll probably just tie some paracord to here or the second one, or both. Run it down, let the vine grow onto it, and then get onto here and there. And then you can take the paracord out or let it disintegrate or would it not. Wires, as I tension the bottom one, it kind of pulls the post a little bit. Well, we got such a far run, I think one in the middle should do all right. But for now, you need to get this guy up off the ground and everything. Because normally the wind will blow and it'll pull my, that it's a tomato trellis it's in. So I'm not sure we may have to cut the trellis part. Okay. Make sure everybody's not grabbing on. do I'm gonna guess is I'm gonna run I don't know they're all grabbing each other right there it's all the way to the top one that's good all we gotta do is just probably wrap it just a little bit just got them little Let's see if you can see them I like these little finger dealies they'll start to roll around you can see the freaking Japanese beetles. That one down there, I'm not sure. Let's see what I can do with this. And if you look down in here, it's a pretty tangled mess. There's one coming way out over here. So I'm gonna trim it back. I'm gonna clear out the bottom a little bit. Uh, I got two of these shoots. It's just, it's a big mess, but I hate to cut it back because it's got so much nice growth. But it'll help grow in other areas. All these ones coming out the side, I don't really, I'm coming out the wrong side. I need them to go up and out. And I got this. It's two. Uh, it's actually a bunch. A little dead one right there. We'll get rid of that little piece. Just kind of keep it trimmed up a good bit. I'm going to trim it up and we'll see what we get. Alright guys, there's actually a lot to trim back. Uh, here's the main main one. Here's another main one. I want it to kind of get up on here. So I just got me a piece of 
paracord. I'm gonna do a only fishing knot I know. This is cheap paracord. I think I bought like 4,000 feet of it. So I've been using it forever on stuff. So I just need it to get hold of something. Get a hold of it. Just keeps getting a hold of each other. Got like little tentacles that grab a hold of stuff. I'm just going to kind of weave it around it. I'm not going to tie it or nothing. Just kind of wrap it on there. Hopefully that'll... There we go. Because it's going to... The, the vine's going to expand and get wider. So I don't want to wrap it on there real tight and mess it up. And then for now, I'm just putting the leaves. Just slowly kind of weaving them around the wire. Just a leaf on this side, a leaf on that side. And it'll help us sit there until we can get these little tentacles wrapped around things. And I already got some up here. And I can, I can kind of just... So I got some up here. I had some at the end. I just kind of put them around the wire. And it'll start to grab a hold of the wire. And then it'll climb up. And I'm going to run it that way. That one's going to go up and go that way. That'll go that way. And now I'm going this way. And then there was a bunch down here. There was like three or four coming off one this way. So I trimmed it up. I might trim some more of these leaves down here just to give it some airflow. And then also kind of keep a, uh, what do you call it, like a space for these bugs not to be hiding out up in here. My guess is kind of like a tomato plant where you want the bottom kind of airy. Where you can get some nice airflow and breathe. Well, there's the main one going up. That one over there is getting close to the wire. So I'll tie a rope and then kind of just fit, fish it around there a little bit. So it can start to climb. It's, it's got these little get, little guys. And when they touch something they'll just slowly wrap around it. So it'll be able to grab on. And see how I just... I didn't really try to bend it. This part was flexible. So I just kind of put the leaves up there. I'm going to water a little bit down here. I'm going to water down down here. Let it get some water. Kind of trim off some of these little dead sticks and things just to let it produce new leaves and not focus on the stuff it doesn't need. Alright guys, that's my take on the Grape Arbor. Or is it? Yeah. I don't know. What are you going to call it? But I do see I need to add a support. Probably in the center. Run a post in the center. Strap the cable to it. And that. And I may not let the concrete dry enough. I should let a few more hours. But I got a lot of stuff to do. <clears throat> It'll be good. Uh, we'll check back. Maybe we'll post a short in a couple months. We'll see how this vine's doing. Hopefully it's really spread out. It should because we trimmed it back and it'll put more energy to grow its other ones out so all right guys it's getting hot it's supposed to be about 90 something and uh i'm gonna put a rope for the other one and then i'm gonna work on ideas for pretty much a raised bed underneath here just so we don't have to weed eat and uh a couple inches three or four inches of uh wood chips Will actually hold moisture in too for them because my guess is they're like a watermelon because the grapes is watery and needs a good bit of water so, as always guys just uh get out and do some projects you know even if you start just a tiny bit at a time eventually you'll get it that's how this place is it's a big overgrown field and we're chiseling it out and uh there's the goats they're hanging out over there and we got the chickens going and soon this will be our garden. And then cows and more goats. So stay tuned. Like and subscribe, guys. I appreciate it. We are headed up there. Almost 600. So appreciate it. Catch you guys later.